Hi, everybody. My name is John DiPietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And on this Camper Report Show, we are going to introduce you to a brand new couple. Actually, not really new RVing couple. They've been RVing three years, but they're on their third RV. We're going to tell you the mistake that they made so you do not repeat them. It's going to be an interesting segment. Are they going for four and four years? I think they're happy with three and three. <laughs> All right. I've got an interview with Heather Leach, the executive director of the Pennsylvania RV and Camping Association. We're going to talk about the upcoming Hershey show in September at Hershey Park. And we will be there as well. So with know. that being said, I we want to remind I told we'd be there. Yeah. We want to remind everyone that this is the Camp Report Show, and we get so much of our material from our friends at RV Business and Woodall's Campground Magazine. So stay with us for a great show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Camp Report Show. My name is John DiPietro. The guy next to the lighthouse is Bob Zagami, and we are talking all things RVing. And today, Bob... There's so much going on in the industry, but um, you saw that Airstream. You you were at an Airstream event. You saw, what, over almost a 1,000 Airstreams in one spot last week. And um, now the Airstream dealers are being recognized for great um, customer service. Yeah, we, we were up at the 65th Airstream Club International Rally in Freiburg, Maine. They had, you're right, over 950 Airstreams, everything from some of the originals to some of the newest ones that are on the road. And, and these are dedicated. Uh, this Hold, is on, Bob. Like Hold on, Bob. Some of the originals and the newest ones. You did talk to a 92-year-old or 102-year-old person and a two-month-old baby, right? Is right. That meant? No, that was, that, I was talking about the products, but we were really close. That's a good way to look at it. We had a two-month-old baby who was actually part of a full-timing family, and we did some interviews with them. And then we met Clara, who was 102 years young, still camping in her Airstream trailer with her daughter and son-in-law, and she got around the campground better than I did. So, <laughs> but yeah, daughter, they, granddaughter, great-granddaughter, great-great. <laughs> they could have they could have fit six generations in one of that. Well, they also had the Airstream historian who had an, uh, an Argosy from 1931 that she travels around the country in, and she was very instrumental in wow. designing the Airstream Heritage Center, which is the story of Airstream a Museum that they just opened up at the Jackson Center uh, facility in Ohio. Ohio. Wow. So talk a little bit about it. I know we can't go through them all because there's so many different categories, but there were some renowned dealers um, across the country that got awards. Talk a little bit about those. Awards. Yeah, a lot of companies give five star awards or 10 stars or gold stars or silver stars. Airstream gives rivets and uh, being a silver Airstream, but they recognize their top dealers with the rivet award. Okay, but you got to say why the rivet is. Uh, pertinent to Airstream. Well, that's right, because they are put together with rivets in the same way that they construct an airplane with solid aluminum, yeah. and they last forever, And which is people sometimes will say, wow, they're so expensive. Well, yeah, but you might buy two or three conventional travel trailers when you have one Airstream, because they do go on forever and ever. One uh, trivia piece, and I know we've talked about it before, that makes Airstream very unique is that most travel trailers, most travel trailers are built from the ground up. So they put the platform on, they put the walls all around it, and then they build, I'm uh, sorry, they put the floor down, they build everything up from there, the cabinets, the bathroom, what have you, and then they put the outside walls and the roof on. Airstream does the exact opposite. Put the chat the floor down, and then they bring that silver body down on it, and then everything that goes into the trailer goes in through the side door, yeah. which means that if it went in the side door, it can come out the side door. So if you so need restorations and renovations are easy yeah. compared to many travel trailers, where once the stuff is inside, it could it's be there. impossible to get it out without taking out 
a couple of windows or panels. That that's unique. Yep. But the awards are designed for the dealers who provide exemplary service and support uh, to their many customers worldwide. And their overall single dealer location, uh, best in the country, was Airstream of Tampa, which is part of RV One, which is part of RV Retailer. And the uh, top overall dealer group was Airstream Adventures out west, and they even recognized their top international dealer which was a company in Germany. And these are what they call five, five rivet awards to have that. We didn't have anybody uh, uh, in New England that made it, but of the Eastern Eastern region, there was Airstream of Tampa, Colonial Airstream, Woodland yep. Airstream, Michigan, Airstream of Virginia, and Airstream of South Florida. And they go down through the, uh, the various regions that they have, but, uh, RV1 and that Airstream of Tampa built a brand new Airstream store about, about a year and a half ago. And it is the only thing they sell at that store is Airstreams. Right. And it's just an iconic brand, much like a Winnebago. They're out there. They've been out there for a long time and they will remain out there for a long time. Right. And another iconic brand, as we talk, um, is Jayco. And Jayco just had an event where they showcased some new products and a couple very, very interesting ones, a small product and a large product. So the small product was a towable called the Volare. And I remember when Plymouth had that K car called the Volare. But uh, this has nothing to do with that. Talk a little bit about the styling and the, um, the lines that are in that Volare. Well, I very much a European influenced trailer forward, forward leaning front wall, which gives you the appearance of being much larger than it is. It's lightweight, uh, easily towable, and it gives them a, a product category that they they had not been doing well in before. But this is going to fill a couple of gaps in their product line and can be towed by anything that can tow, say, a five or six thousand pound vehicle cars, uh, small SUVs, and uh, it's equipped with solar capability and uh, lithium batteries and solar panels and an 1,800-watt inverter. So it's ready to go out in the road. Ready to go, yeah. In off-season. But the European influence, influence is dramatic, and it's very much different than anything you've ever seen come out of Jayco. So I think it's going to be a very popular product with the dealer community. Um the other one, they kind of caught me by surprise, but they took the Seneca and they made it, they made a model called the Seneca XT for off-roading in a Super C. And this is built on a Ford uh, five, F550 chassis and it's a four by four vehicle. But uh, in the Super C market, which again, every couple of months now we're seeing somebody else come out with a super c or add to their super c product line as they've done here the seneca has been out for quite a few years but this is a true off-road super c vehicle and it, you know their market research shows that this is this is what a lot of people want on the super c's yep exactly i know the one that we um the one that we had the uh europa by Dynamax was anything but an off-road vehicle. I mean, that was a big, sturdy vehicle that um, I don't think you'd want to go out into the um, mountains and and with that. But this new Jayco product has the tow bar in front where, uh, you know, and again, it's four-wheel drive, so it's got the big knobby tires, et cetera. That'll be very interesting. Yeah. And another very interesting topic is it appears as though the initial testing on the Ford Lightning truck in RV use is anything but electrifying. Yeah, you did. it's a great way to describe it, John. I mean, it, it's the real world now. They're getting these things out there to uh, experts to evaluate them, to do test drives with them. And, and here's another story where they kind of assume that if you put a trailer on the back of an electric vehicle that you're going to automatically reduce the range 50%. So in the case of the Lightning, they say it can go 300 miles. So you put a trailer on, that means 150. And this was another test done by Motor Trend. And that's no, you know, that's not an unknown company by any means. 
and they couldn't go a hundred miles right. on on a charge. And so it's it's not ready for prime time. We we all know that the country is moving that way. The manufacturers are moving that way. But if I own if I own a trailer or a fifth wheel, I'm not putting it on an electric vehicle well, anytime soon. There's so many other variables that that you know in a testing environment. That's one thing. But in a real world environment, it's totally different. You can say yes, add five thousand pounds, and you will cut the you will cut the uh, the range. However, the other thing they need to take into account, where it doesn't seem as though they did in this case, is um, what is the terrain that you're going on. You know what? If you're going 100 miles on the Mass Pike um, between Springfield and Boston, you're not hitting a lot of hills. But if you take those same 100 miles and go between Springfield and Albany, where you got the Berkshires to deal with, you've got mountains to deal with. And are you going to have an air conditioner on that also drains it? So there's so many factors Owning an electric car, I'm learning so many of those factors that um, you can't necessarily read the MSRP, not the, you know, the dealer, the thing on the window, the window sticker, where it says, you know, range and miles per gallon. That's in the, that's in a non-real world. But what we'd also like to do is if any of our viewers out there have an electric vehicle that they're towing with, whether it's a large SUV, um, write to us down below. Uh, just put it in the comments and we'd be happy to utilize your comments next time we um, do a segment on electric vehicles. Yeah, so, we're going to watch it closely because yep. it's an important topic for many RVs. Well, Absolutely. it's a topic that is being pushed down from from the White House to your house with yep. go electric, go electric, go electric. It's not a political statement. It's just a fact that we're being told that electric vehicles are the wave of the future. But as you said, right now, not ready for prime time. Nope. Is certainly the label that we have to put on it. Nope. So we want to tell everybody to, uh, if you like our show, please um, hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button and share it. Share it with others because we get more and more people each week that are watching the Camp Report Show. And it's all because of the great work of our viewers. So, great. Bob, we are going to say... Stay tuned because you've got a great guest. I've got a great guest. What's the name of the show, Bob? The Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to the Camper Report Show. My special guest this morning is Heather Leach, Executive Director of the Pennsylvania, well, Pennsylvania Recreation Vehicle and Camping Association. <laughs> it's it's a long word. Heather, welcome. Haven't seen you for a while. I know. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. You know, this, this is an exciting time this year. It, it's been crazy for the last two or three years, and you are able to pull off a really great show last year, despite all the challenges. I understand it was your second largest attendance ever. Yes. Yes. We were very happy um, with how everything went last year, especially giving all the uncertainties, you know, that were thrown at us. So yeah, it was really good. Now, what about, can you break the record this year? Well, I mean, that is always the goal. Uh, so far, um, you know, it's been really great, uh, you know, following some social media posts from, you know, RV consumers and everything, you know, there was really a lot of concern last year of, you know, I don't know if I'm going, is there even going to be units there because of, you know, shortages and all that. I haven't seen one question about that this year. So I, I think, um, especially after they came to the show, people that came in were like, oh no, there's, there's units here, you know? So it's nice to see that that concern, um, you know, about attending these events have a has kind of dissipated i would agree with you you know we're getting a lot of attention for a boston show already and it's only you know early in august but the dealers are excited the consumers are excited and it's it's kind of you know mask free and back to the good old days and having fun and uh, i think that a lot of the shows this year will break records because 
The other thing that's going to assist, I, I, tell me if you agree, but now that we've seen a little bit of inflation settling in and the price is going up, I think it's going to be a big buyer's market this year because the dealers have so much inventory. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that part of the issue last year or some of the, maybe the concern from consumers was how long is it going to take me to get the units and, you know, are they, are they even going to have anything when we get there? So it's nice to see some of that, that yeah. has, has gone away. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a help. Now this show for people who maybe people that are not familiar with the show, it's certainly one of the largest and you bill it out as the largest RV show in the country. It's really massive when you stop and think about it because we don't have many large shows in our industry. We got basically you and, and Tampa are the only two really large ones, one up north, one down south. Um, explain the growth, because I go back to, the, as you do, the Harrisburg days, but explain the growth of the show and you know, in line with the growth of the industry and what do you expect this year? You know, it- it's, it's been really amazing to look back even over the footprint of our show since I started. I've been here 16 years already. Um, seems like yesterday, but it's been 16 <laughs> years. And just to see how the footprint has grown over that time. I mean, we's, we've doubled in size since the, you know, since when I first started. Um, and I think that does, is, is a trend that you see with the industry as well and how that has grown substantially over, you know, over the years, you know, when we first started, it was a lot of mom and pops and even, even manufacturers, you know, were, were a much smaller, some of them very family run. And you kind of seen that grow um, over the last decade. And yeah, I think that's something you're just going to see continue to happen. And I think that's what happens as businesses evolve and, um, you know, remain, um, an important industry to to everyone, and and I think you know really over what we've learned in the last two years is the true benefit RVing of a, RVing and camping, and that's some things that some that people never really gave it a lot of thought in the past. Went oh wait, what's this? And I think as much as you hate to say we this industry has benefited from the pandemic, but I do think it opened up a whole new avenue and whole new uh, consumer consumers that never really gave it much thought before. And now they're really turned on to all the benefits that it truly has to offer. Well, you're right. You know, I take a survey when I do my seminars at the Boston show and the last, you know, three, four, five years, over 50% of the people that come to the show are attending an RV show for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And we tend to take things for granted because we've been doing this for 23rd, you know, your case 16 at the association, but I've been covering the industry for 26 years and we have so many new people. There are two things about your show that I'm jealous of because we don't have the space to do anything like what you do. But one is it's truly a destination for many people. They, they come for three or four days. They, they camp in the area. So you bring a lot of business into the area with mm-hmm. the various campgrounds. And the other is the number of demonstration coaches available to consumers to test drive at the show, which you can't do when you have small shows like ours. Uh, Right. Want to speak to either one of those phenomenons and and how you think they uh, help the show? Yeah. I mean, on on your first point, it really is a destination. So we're in Hershey and, you know, people not only just coming to the show, you know, there's obviously some really great things to do in the area. So when they're, you know, if you, if they're coming to the show for a couple of days, you know, if you leave it, you know, five o'clock, you can still hit chocolate world and all, you know, all the, the local Hershey things that there are to do. Um, and really, if you're, if you're coming and like seriously shopping, like you will need a couple of days to make it through the show. And that's one thing I always tell people when they get there, the first thing they should do is take the show program, mark out where they want to go and what products they want to see. So that way, because it's, it's easy to get sidetracked. And, you know, by the end of the day, you realize you never saw the units that you actually were interested in seeing. So I always recommend to just take a couple minutes, kind of map out your plan for the day and, you know, try to stick to that, you know, if, if you definitely have units that you want to see. Um, and yes, we have a, speaking to your other point, we do have a demo lot, we call it. So you can go out um, 
throughout the show and you can test drive units and take them for a spin, which is really great, if especially, you know, before you're making such a purchase to know that you're comfortable driving or kind of know the intricacies of different chassis and that kind of thing. So it does, it is very helpful when people are coming to, you know, to purchase motorhomes for sure. You know, you typically have over a thousand units between everything from a pop-up to a 45 foot diesel pusher. How many mm-hmm. units do you expect to have on display this year? I'm still getting the final numbers in from some of the manufacturers. Please. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, but we'll, um, we're easily over 1,200 this year, right now. So, and it's probably going to be higher than that. Um, and 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 that's not counting the demos. And the demos, we'll get demos up until the start of the show. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good one. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that you do, which is very helpful to us older folks are certainly families, but you run a golf cart taxi service. Explain that and why it's so important because your units are spread out over a very large area. Yeah, we have the whole shows over a million square feet. So it is quite large. Um, I do recommend wearing sneakers. Um, And, but we have a a golf cart taxi service that basically runs throughout the show. It'll run out in the parking lot. So it'll, they can pick you up in the lot and bring you, you know, to the closest ticket gate. Um, and they run throughout the show. So if, if you can, we have different stops that you can wait at and they can, if you want to go and, you know, you're going the whole way across the lot, they'll take you there. And it's especially nice at the end of the day when you're tired, <laughs> when you're tired and we'll take you back to your car. Right. It's you're a very thinking, popular service. You're thinking about going to another display and the spouse says, well, can we just go back to the exit? I'm, I'm done for the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another yeah. big component for you is education. I know that as an association, you hired a new education director this year. And yes. uh, you have an industry day on Tuesday where you have a lot of seminars. And of course, Chris Doherty's part of your staff now in terms of uh, instructors. And Chris is phenomenal. You know, we've used him up here in Boston. But explain mm-hmm. the education component for the consumers because our audience sure. is consumers. So we basically have seminars every hour um, that run probably from 10 to, and the last one probably ends around seven. Um, And it's, we have four different seminar rooms. So they go pretty regularly throughout the day. And it's everything from, you know, we have the RV Safety and Education Foundation talking about, you know, uh, tire safety and, you know, can uh, the proper way to tow your trailer, making sure you have the right tow vehicle um, to, how to do full-time RVing and, and you know, and, and there's some that, you know, maybe you have insurance questions or there might be a seminar on that. So there's, it's, it's, we really try to offer a variety. There might be maintenance tips, which I know everyone's always a fan of, of <laughs> ma- they're doing some of their own maintenance. So there's really something from, if you don't have an RV and this is something that you're want to know more information about, we have uh, seminars targeted to that, to people that have been doing it for years. So we try to get a nice variety in there to help no matter what stage you are on your RVing course. Yeah. yeah. And people are very helpful. And of course, once you're open to the public, you have manufacturers, reps helping out the the dealers in terms of uh, explaining the new products. And there's, there's always a lot of new products because you come a week or two before our industry event out in Elkhart. So it's a good way for them to measure consumer acceptance. Yes. And and that's a big thing for the industry is like they get to see the feedback rate from the customers to see what what they like and what they don't. So if they ever have to make any kind of changes, it's a really good, great way to see, to get the customer reaction before they're too too far into their new year. Um, But yeah, and it's really great to have so many manufacturer reps on site as well. I think the, uh, the customers really appreciate that. Well, I think uh, you only got a couple minutes left here, but the other thing that uh, works well for you folks is the way that you set up the display. This, this is what I call a, a manufacturer show. You know, when you go to some shows, even ours, if you want to see Winnebago, then you have to go over here and over there and over there. So you got to look in, and see it in different places, but you've set it up so that you're, you're identified by manufacturers. You can look at the map, and say, I want to see Winnebago, I want to see Forest River, I want to see Airstream, and everything that they have, 
that they have brought to the show is in that one location. That's a tremendous advantage for the consumers. Yes, it does make it easier for them to navigate, especially if they're looking, if, you know, like if, like you said, if you're looking for a Jayco, you only have to go to one spot to, to find them. So, yeah. Okay. So how, give them, give the customers, uh, consumers some of the information they should have for the show, website, dates, good stuff like the, that. Our website is largestrvshow.com and you can purchase your tickets on there online. Um, you, you will make it through the entrance much faster if you if you have your tickets already purchased before you arrive. Um, the dates are September 14th through the 18th, and it runs 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., except on Sunday, which is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Fantastic. Our guest this morning has been Heather Leach from the Pennsylvania RV Camping Association, executive director. I've known her for all of her 16 years that she has been yes. at the association. It's always great to see you and John and I will be down for the show. I okay. Just I just don't know what dates, but we will be seeing you about a month, a little bit. Yep. Sounds good. We'll be there. Thanks for joining us, Heather. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool, it has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Hey everybody, the Do It Now Tour continues. And one of the cool things about RVing is every time you change campgrounds, you have a whole new neighborhood. And we ran into this young couple from New Jersey. We're down here, and where are we, guys? I don't even know where we are. Oh, Ocean we're in City? Ocean, City, Ocean Maryland. City, Maryland. Berlin, Maryland. Berlin, to be, to be official. So, I've told, I've been told that you guys have a very interesting RVing story. First of all, tell us your first names. I'm Lou. I'm Damien. I'm Damien. This is. And, Craig, that's Paul. Okay, Paul's the cousin, right? Okay. Yep. Tell us about your um, RVing background. I understand that it's pretty interesting in that you've had uh, several RVs in a short period of time. Go ahead, babe. So we started out, we went to Disney World, and we were driving on I I-95 from New Jersey. And I was like, babe, let's go see one of these RVs. And then we went. You're to, in a car when you're. We're in the car, okay. yes. So we went to Disney, and then we decided to go to Camping World. On our look, anniversary. On our yes, our ten year anniversary. And our, on our last day in Disney we went into one of the stores and we picked out an R V. <laughs> and then we drove home with one and yeah. And then a year later. We, we picked got up the R V and had our car shipped back from the dealership, which was a condition of selling it. <laughs> and then on the way home from Disney I had to figure out how to winterize an R V. In so did you hours. stay at Fort Wilderness when you're there? We oh, did. You did, okay. With a with a brand new RV that you just bought. Yes. On on somewhat short short notice. Yes. If you will. Okay. So um but you're really part of that new group of RVers that um are RVing when you're young enough to remember what city you're in <laughs> and to uh, bring the kids along. Oh yeah. So um what do you like best about RVing? Spending time with the family. You're forced to disconnect, even though sometimes it's hard. No, disconnect from all the you machines know. and... Well, yeah. Well, certainly from, not shore power. <laughs> <laughs> from, like, the social media and then just, you know, more of family and, you know, being able to be with them only without okay. having to stress about the other things that goes on. Okay. Papa. I like cooking. You like cooking, okay, and... Inside and outside. Okay, so last night you gave me the probably the nicest taco I've had in a long, long time. I was immediately... Uh, attention was drawn to you because of your shirt that says, nope, not, not today. today. Not today, but you said cooking, and you look it. You've got one of those uh, open grills. You've got a barbecue grill. Um, oven inside. Oven inside. Um, and you can cook outside and not worry about spills and stuff because it's it's outdoors. Um, cooking is your coolest part of it. That's, That's it. Very interesting. I like to cook outside, like to eat outside, and I like to take naps. Yeah. 
And and uh, I only get naps here. Have you had a chance to uh, nap in that? No. I mean, yes, you you're have on a big tree, me. Dad. Well, no. You got a you got a good sized tree. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll see what happens when somebody falls out of it. Okay. Um, yep. So, what would you say to other families that said, "Oh, I'd like to RV, but you know, uh, for some reason or another, I haven't pulled the trigger yet." Pick the right size first. Yes. Okay. And don't underestimate what you're going to need. This is our third one. We because have switched we RVs right every size. year. Yep. You, have okay. to, you have to think of where your family is going to be at least four or five years away. Okay, now I know you got a couple cousins and nieces and nephews here, but your own family is how many people? Three. 11, 9, and 2. Okay. And now, three dogs. Yeah, well, I was going to say, that's another aspect of what you're dealing with here. Uh, if you want to go on vacation to a hotel, the dogs ain't coming, are they? Part of the other reason why we RV, because we don't have to fly, we don't have to worry about people watching our dogs. Okay. They come in with us. And the dogs are part of the family? Yes. So from that perspective, um, I mean, the dogs are in the in, inside. Yep. Um, they've got the whole... And they got the doggy window, too. <laughs> oh, the, the, the doggy window. Okay. Yeah. So what, were the, what, what mistakes did you make uh, in the beginning as far as our, buying? Our first RV, we didn't have a full-size fridge. Oh, we had, we okay. Had to pack coolers. coolers. We had three coolers outside, and the small fridge inside. So that wasn't he, enough. That that was a purchasing mistake. But yeah. the first mistake was my wife putting the ladder on top of the slide out oh, without yeah. telling me. <laughs> so when we opened the slide, the we first. crunched the ladder and almost put a hole in the side of the RV. Yeah. Okay. Um, last year, or the after that, uh, this guy was playing with the hydraulics and decided to go up and down a couple of times and busted a hose because the jacks with it. <laughs> yep. so that one last year um oh this guy over here yeah, that one, that was one playing there. with the uh the water from the refrigerator and wound up causing like a, a pressure boost and yep. blew up the uh the hose and came back from buying ice cream for the children and saw a waterfall shooting out of the side of the rv and we were in maryland too and we had to drive back home that was a nice one day trip <laughs> A bunch of yeah, we went to King's Dominion and came back to that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was Father's Day, too, wasn't it? Was Father's Day yeah, weekend. exactly. <laughs> so this one here, uh, you decided on a Georgetown by Forest River. What um, what attracted you? Well, we had our, our last one was a Georgetown. We liked it, but we needed the bunkhouse for the kids. Okay, so you got bunks, so, what, on the other side? Yeah, so two bunks, a king size, and two a little bit bigger by, than a and, full size. Oh, two we bath two, and a half? Or? We have two bathrooms, which is... I never thought I was going to need to, but now with the kids growing big, two really makes it easier for the adults to have their own separate space. Great. And I don't mean to sound chauvinistic, but my wife loves to do laundry. Oh, I have, we have a washer and dryer. Oh, you have a washer and dryer. Yes. Okay, so you went big time. And she loves to clean. And she loves to clean and he likes to cook, which is kind of yeah. different than most okay. uh, situations. Uh, the dogs like traveling? Yes. So when you put him on the tr when you put him on board, no, no, because we had a dog that when you put him on, he immediately ducked underneath the dashboard oh, because wow. he didn't like it. No, um, our white boxer will uh, sit on the chair and drive with me. He just like that. Right next, just like right that. Next. How about this guy here? What's your name? Drake. Drake. What um, What do you like about RVing, Drake? What's the best part when your parents say, come on, we're going somewhere? I just jump in my bed. You just jump in a bed with, you got a TV monitor in it? Mm -hmm. No. No. He no. likes, likes, <laughs> likes the bunk tablet. beds. Yeah. He likes yeah. the little window, right? Yeah. We got a cozy bed. Well, you know what? We interrupted your supper. We want to thank you so much for taking thank time you, from man. your busy day. We won't see you tomorrow because we're hitting the road early in the morning. Safe travels. And... Um, don't make too much noise. And uh, wish you the best in your travels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.